Hello from the 11th inning stretch. My name is Paul Epi, and this is a podcast uh, filmed on July 2nd, a week in review, but in this case, it'll be a weeks in review because I was gone on vacation and we have not done a podcast in two weeks. Uh, so here we are, Alex, it is good to see you once again. Um, good to see you too, buddy. We're going to jump right into league news here. Uh, we have a pretty decent amount to cover and not a whole lot of time to cover it because we're trying to keep this shorter than our last podcast, which was an, an hour long. Um, you know, the first thing that I that jumped in my mind when it came to league news over the past two weeks was that the Indians cannot lose a game. Um, I don't know if you had watched the the Toronto game yesterday uh, on July first. I'd, I'd watched a little bit of it, not not um, too much of it. It was a nineteen inning game, as I'm sure you saw. Um, yeah, and the Indians just seemed to sort of seem to have this thing going for them where they cannot lose a game. And uh, their their pitching staff has been fantastic. Um, they're, they're pitching the daylights out, and then um, they're hitting the ball too. I mean, maybe not in yesterday's Toronto game. So it was a two to one game after nineteen innings, but um, overall, I mean, they're 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 playing some really good ball. And I'm going to ask you this: uh, Do you think they're the favorites in the AL Central? I did. I don't remember. I did pick them in the playoffs. I don't remember if I picked them to win it all. Um, I think I picked Kansas City. It was either Kansas City or Indians to win it all. Um, I I was a believer in them from the start. Um, You know, my uh, I was I had a I actually had a softball game on Thursday night and um, you know, kind of a heartbreaking loss, lost by one, and kind of heated a little bit about some of the things that I did during that game and. Uh, my buddy came up to me and was talking to me about the Indians, and he's like, oh, the, the Indians probably had the best rotation in baseball. And I'm like, you know, I kind of started thinking about it, and I'm like, no, they, they, no, they don't. I was like, no, I was like, I, no, they I, don't. I, like, and I, real, real quick, I kind of just think that that term's kind of thrown around, you know, you know, loosely. oh, it's a, it's, yeah, it's a, it's a what have you done for me lately, lately kind of term. Because in my mind, overall, they do not have the best rotation in baseball. It's not not, even, not overall, no, but yeah, I mean not as even, not even close. But as of as of late, I mean, yeah, they've been pitching really well. They've hit really well. And the kind of thing that people don't take, you know, he, he even said he's like, Oh, well, you know, they're not really that good of a team. Well, I mean, they're beating good teams. Yeah. Like they they just beat Toronto yesterday. A high offensive team, the highest offensive team last year, I think that they're still kind of up there this year, and you beat them two to one. If you said that Toronto was going to score one run in 19 innings, you got to give some credit to Cleveland. Real quick, got an update on my phone from Sports Center. Cleveland Indians' 14-game win streak ends with a 9-6 loss to the Blue Jays. Rajay Davis hit for the cycle, and it's Cleveland's first cycle since 2003. So... And Roger Davis is like thirty-two years old too, but he's st- he's still pretty. That's just still pretty good he, outfield. Still pretty I have him in one of my fantasy leagues because I'm waiting on Carlos Bell trying to get healthy. Um, but uh, I think the Clevelands are still going to be good. They have a lot of good young talent. Mike Napoli's coming through as one of those leaders of the club, which is awesome to see. He's one of those guys you kind of have to cheer for. I really like him. Um, I mean, but other than that, I mean, that's nothing too, too. I mean, they're they're a good ball club. They're playing good baseball. There's nobody on their team that's going to be a huge superstar. Uh, you know, right now, Francisco Lindor has that potential. But I mean, I mean yeah. a couple things for me. Um, I think we all forget how good of a manager Terry Francona is. You know, with Boston. Everyone was riding his trains. Oh, Terry Francona is the best manager of baseball. He's just the best. Um, and then when he went to Cleveland, everyone stopped paying attention to him uh, because it's Cleveland. It's not Boston or New York. It It's Cleveland. No one cares about Cleveland. Sorry, Cleveland. Um, well, people may not know since the Cavaliers won. Well, yeah. But, um, but in terms of baseball, no one, no one cares. Um, but he's still a really good manager. Um, and, and I think we can forget that sometimes is that, you know, he's, he's won a couple world series and he knows what he's doing. Um, and, and my other thing was, I think I picked the, 
the White Sox win the division, and I was riding the White Sox train hard too. And now I, I look like a fool. Um, they're still in it, but I mean, not nearly as close as it was weeks ago. Uh, they've been sliding hard, and and I, I and I'm starting to think now that this might be Cleveland's division to lose. I think it'll be Cleveland and probably Kansas City. Um, I'm I'm not I've never been a, a huge fan of Detroit because I don't like their pitching. Um, Chicago's fallen off the wagon. The Twins are just downright terrible this season. Um, I think it's between the Cleveland and the, and the Royals, and maybe it's not their division to win or to lose yet. Um, but it's it, it's pretty close. Um, Kansas City, I don't think they're as good as they were last year or the previous two seasons, rather. But they're still good, and they're still going to have something to say about it. Um, so yeah, and to I think it's going to be a two horse race. To be fair, too, actually both – I mean, this isn't really saying much about the one team, but both Chicago teams have kind of fallen off as of late. The Cubs yeah. really haven't been playing Cub baseball like they have all season. They're not the offensive powerhouse that they were to start off. Not saying that they're really bad right now, but, I mean – I'm I mean, interested to see what Jason Hayward's going to do in the second half of the season because we all know he's a second-half player. With the Cardinals in the first half, he was, he was really awful. In the second half, he was all playing, playing like an all-star. Uh, I'm curious if he's going to do that again because if he, if he does do it again, then the, then it's trouble for everyone else. Yeah, I, I, but I don't think that he will be. I don't think that he'll be the. I don't. He's having a really down year for Jason Hayward numbers. Even at the first half, I still don't think he's going to be all-star caliber in the second half. I really don't. I kind of I kind of hope he's not because the Cardinals fan in me says, "Well, I'll forget about you." Um, but I I don't know. I'm not going to agree or disagree. Um, I I hope he doesn't. Uh, but it wouldn't surprise me because he's just so on and off like that sometimes. Yeah, I mean, I just man, I just and, don't I don't see it. And I also Man, it would be awesome to see the Cubs fall to some games because out of their last yeah. 10, I think I saw something where they have won the last four out of 10. The Cardinals had won the last five out of 10. Brewers, That's still not great, but I mean, it's yeah. – yeah. Brewers, Brewers and – no, maybe – yeah, Brewers and Pirates were both last five of 10. And I think the Reds were two of ten. I mean, yeah, the Reds. The, yeah. the Reds. <laughs> um, yeah. Speaking of Chicago sports, I want to ask you one more quick question, then we'll get to your topics. I I was doing a little bit of reading, and there are these chats Derek Gould does on STL Today, where people, you know, Cardinals fans come in asking questions, and uh, you know, he answers questions. Um, and there's been some talk of that the White Sox. Would maybe look in the trading Chris Sale, and my response is, why? Um, yeah, I mean, so, why? so my question to you is, why would they? He has a very team friendly contract. I don't know the numbers off the top of my head, but apparently it's very team friendly, and he is under control for a while, like you know, a couple of years. Uh, it makes no sense to me why the White Sox would would ever consider trading that. The only thing I can think of, there's there's two things that come to mind. One, Sale wants out. Sale okay. realizes he may not win in Chicago at the White Sox, you know, here soon. Um, and two, he might have a he has a lot of a lot of a, a, a lot going for him. For from a team trading standpoint, you could get a, a ton back with a Chris Sale. Right? This could maybe go in the same topic as, as the Angels trading Mike Trout, couldn't it? Yeah, I mean it could be. I mean you have you have two potential big stars that may want out. I mean Mike Trout, everybody was talking about him. to be to be you know always going to stay with one team for his career. But how often do you see that now? Like never. There's not never. anybody who really stays with one team for their entire career. I, it just I mean no, the only one not. that I, can, I mean. The only one I can think of right now, and this is just the homer coming out in me, is Yadi Molina is the only one that I can think of right now who's had a um, long career who stayed with the same team. 
current players? No, there's really nobody. Not like, you know, David Ortiz hasn't. Miguel Cabrera hasn't. Um, too gosh. Uh, now, some of it isn't their fault. Hasn't Joey no. Votto always been with the Reds? He's been with the Reds. That's right. Yeah. Okay, so Joey Votto's always been David with the Wright, Reds. David Wright, another one. Uh, Buster Posey's been with the Giants. David Wright with the Mets. David Wright with the Mets. Oh, there was another one with the Mets. I'm not really thinking. That's about um, it, to be honest with you. And then another one that just retired, who's always been Derek Jeter, was always with the Yankees. Mm-hmm. Um, Goldsmith's always been with the D-backs, but, I mean. Yeah, he, but he's not really he's that very old. early in his career. Yeah, exactly. He's not He's not super old right now. Um, man, I thought there was a couple more from up in the from up in the Maybe East Kershaw, area. but, again, he's still young. Yeah, he's he's really young still. Um Man, Not I even mean, each I, row hasn't. Um, yeah, and oh my, or, okay. Um, sorry about that. Watching the game. Um, I mean, yeah, there's not too many players, but it's not it's not as coveted as it once was. No, you know what I'm saying? No. Like, you used to get so much more going on for you if you stayed with one team. Like, you had people had a desire to stay with one team. And they really don't anymore. It's really more about the money than what it has been in the past. I mean, but like, but just if you just from the White Sox perspective, I mean, say he doesn't want out. Say he has not expressed interest in in leaving. You you could get a lot in return, but I feel like if the, if you're the White Sox, especially, you could keep building around it, and that's what they've been doing the past couple of seasons. Now it it hasn't worked out for them, but why give up? Yeah, I mean, I, I don't know. Yeah, I, yeah, I don't. And speaking of quick trade potential, moving on to some of the stuff that I had wrote down. Um, you know, Escobar apparently has had a lot of trade potential uh, with the Angels. Um, a good leadoff man. He's batting three ten, I believe is what it said when I looked the other day. Um, I, he's come on. I don't know where he came from as of late. No, but, I don't know I mean, either. I mean, he's come out of nowhere. Um, real, and then uh, another thing that came across just real quick is the Red Sox had an international signing ban for one year. Uh, they, apparently they went over their limit for the signing of international free agents. Uh, so they had like five contracts that were voided. Um, and apparently John Mozeliak, in quick cardinal news, John Mozeliak said that uh, they're supposed to hit the international market real heavy here in the next couple days. Started today, actually, yeah. Yeah, starting today is supposed to be like a huge day for Cardinal baseball in international in international meaning. Um, and then real quick, since the Mets wanted to make me look bad on this show, uh, I had said a couple weeks ago that the Mets I came across TV that the Mets had no interest in signing um, in signing Jose Reyes if he became a free agent. Because um, they and, did, and they signed Jose Reyes when he became a free agent. Um, so I mean, on the on the discussion of staying with one team, people thought Jose Reyes was going to stay with the Mets for his entire career. That didn't happen. He kind of left the Mets and spiraled out of control into a really bad player. Um, still, I believe has a lot of potential to hit, to field, to run. Um, but the Mets signed into a minor league deal. I guess as a backup plan to Unel Escobar, or not Unel Escobar, to as Drupal Cabrera. Um, I guess we can see where that goes. I'm not reading too much into it. Yeah, if, I think if he plays, it'll be like a September call up or a or a injury thing. I don't think they're they're going to be in any rush to make him a starting shortstop any, anytime soon. Well, I think the plan that they had was to bring him up and play third base until. Um, if is is David Wright ever going to be injury free? I I don't know. Because he's always a, he's always been a really fun player to watch, but the dude is a walking hospital. Yeah, I mean, I don't know the exact what the plan is. Um, I, I don't think the Mets know what the plan is either. Yeah, I, but I don't. I think the Mets are in a position right now where they kind of feel like they have to keep him just because he's been there for him. He decided to sign a deal a couple of years ago to keep him there for the rest of his career. Um. Man, I don't really know. I think it's more of a backup plan. And I can see Jose Reyes actually playing some third or is Drupal Cabrera playing some third. Um, 
I think that that's a big key piece that they're missing is a solid defensive third baseman. Um, so if they can bring that up, and then I think that that's a, one of the teams to be in the NL East. Along if that with rotation can stay healthy, yeah, for sure. Yeah. Um, I mean, other I – mean, Speaking of the Mets, did you see that they owe that one Bobby Bonella yeah. guy, Bonilla guy till he's like for like the rest of his career for like twenty thirty five? Yeah, that yeah, dude's gonna be walking one. to the that dude's gonna be walking to the bank every year just to put a big sack of money around his shoulder, just laughing his way to the bank. Yeah, it's one point one nine million. I saw it on Facebook and I didn't believe it at first, and I'm kind of seeing you know then all some sports center put it on there, and then Buzzfeed put it on there. I'm like. Jesus, like what kind well, of contract did they sign him to? Yeah, no, well, no, he's smart for signing that contract, first of all. Um, the Mets are just stupid for offering it to him. Um, but my thing is, is this like a personal services contract? Because, like, I know for, for Albert Pujols, after he's done playing for the Angels, he has a 10 year personal service contract with them, which basically means he has to stay with the team in some capacity. Um, is that sort of like that? I mean, I don't know why you would just routinely offer him a, almost $2 million on a yearly basis. Yeah, I don't. I mean, that's, I mean, that's just, man, I don't even know. I mean, unless he took kind of like a pay cut for like his playing career and then kind of had him chalk it up past that. Cause I know there's been some know. deals. There have been some deals like that. Uh, I know there was one here of recent, but I don't remember who it was. Um, after he retired Good for Bobby career. Pinella, though. He, I mean, he's going to be – yeah, I mean, he's, he's set up for a while. Yeah, you're, I mean, you're getting paid to 30 – till 2030 – what did you say? Five. 2035 is 2016. Yeah, he's, so he's even if 20, 19 years of a of, of million dollars. Oh, he, he's doing just fine. Exactly. That means, like, grandkids, kids, probably even great-grandkids by then. I mean – they're all set up. Yeah, I mean, you're set up. You're getting paid while, while he sits on his rear end, probably just gone fishing for the summer. He gets a million dollars to do literally nothing. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, good for him if that's if that's what the Mets want to do. Uh, yeah. I mean, that's up I, to them. I can't say I wouldn't take that deal either. Exactly. Exactly. Um, but that, that's all you, I have for league news. Um, I guess we'll go ahead and go into Cardinals now. Uh, there's been a lot happened since we last talked two weeks ago. Uh, the biggest development is that Trevor Rosendahl is not the closer. That's not new. It happened like we, uh, you know, a week ago. Um, but now with Kevin Segrist out, uh, O is now going to be your main ninth inning guy. Um, and then who becomes your eighth inning guy? Is it, do you think it's Broxton or maybe even Tuivala? No, I think I think Broxton will be your eighth inning guy. Um, Tui Valala will kind of just fill Broxton's spot as a reliever. Maybe I don't, like a... I don't believe in the whole, oh, you have to have a seventh, eighth, and ninth inning guy. I feel like the most no, important one is your eighth and ninth. And then everybody else is just, in my eyes, just a reliever. Situational purposes. I don't like it either, but that's the way it is. So that's just what you have to to to, to work with. Um, I don't yeah, like I don't... it either, but... And I think it's to teams as well. Like it, it's subject to certain teams, like to the Yankees. It's I mean, you have a seven, eight, nine because you have that three-headed, mm-hmm. three-headed monster is what they like to call it. And I feel like that's. But to the Cardinals, I feel like you have an eighth and a ninth, and then everybody else other than that is a reliever. Yep. Like two. And like that's Broxton, the way it is for most teams. Exactly. Broxton right now, at, before the Seagrass thing, was a reliever. Now that Seagrass is hurt, I believe that. Um, o goes into the closure spot, which he should have been when Rosenthal went down, in my eyes. Broxton moves into your eighth-inning spot, and Tuivalala kind of fills in as a situational reliever. I feel like that's just how it is. That's how it should be. Um, I feel like that the Cardinals do anything other than that, that somebody deserves to be fired because O to the closer role seemed like a pretty easy move when Rosenthal went down, and they put Segris there, which – Hey, if you want to take the best handed, best left handed reliever you have and throw him into a closer role for three outs, hey, that's your decision. But that wouldn't have been mine. No. Yeah, I. Cardinals right now are just confusing everybody. If you're a true fan of Cardinal baseball, you should be completely confused as to what's going on right now. Just absolutely, just driving me bonkers. 
Yeah, you know, the 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 Cardinals are just playing really sloppy baseball. You know, it's not bad baseball. Um, but as we've been saying literally this entire season, they cannot put everything together at once. Um, they can't put a comfortable game together. You know, last night, the 7-1 win against the Brewers was the, was the, was the first game in like two weeks I've been able to sit back and say, just whew, I'm gonna be able to, I'm gonna be able to relax this game. The Cardinals are gonna win. Everything's fine. We'll see you again tomorrow. Um, we haven't had those type of games. Um, mainly, it's because the pitching hasn't been great. Um, yeah, I, it's the, the, I'm not I'm not blaming the offense really. The offense is for the most part doing their job, win or lose. They are hitting the ball and they are hitting a lot of the baseball, um, but. They, it's the pitching once again, um, and, and and you know, prior to Rosenthal being demoted, those games before that, oh, it was tough to watch, because if you go into a or if you go into the eighth or ninth inning with a lead, or even a tie game, your confidence level in in Rosenthal was so low, and you almost expected to lose the game. Yeah, yeah. I- and to your point about sloppy baseball, I mean, you, I mean, you're telling it exactly right. They've had trouble figuring out the defense is going to work. I mean, I'm, you've had now th- at least three center fielders. I mean, with Wong yeah, now, to, with to, Wong now playing some center field. Sorry to interrupt, but 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 to all this mixing and matching with the positions and and, and the lineups and who's playing where, you don't know who. I feel like that's kind of hurting them at this point. Yeah, like, I mean, well, while you do need to figure out where Wong's going to play, where Carpenter's going to play, where Peralta and Diaz are going to play, um, and Moss and Adams, I feel like you're mixing and matching almost a little too much. Yeah, I mean, sorry, I'm sorry about that. Um, but yeah, I completely agree with you. I mean, and, and it. It really, it's it's really bad too because Matt Adams was hitting so well, and you don't play him, and you don't play him, and you don't play him, and you don't play him. And he doesn't start. You know, Moss is always in the starting lineup. Every time you look at the lineup, Moss is starting, which is fine. But the guy's batting two fifteen has seventeen home runs. I mean, and that's it. basically what I'm trying to say is Adams should start in that case. Okay, so now the second base position. Okay, yeah, you you took long, sent long down. He played some games in center field, or played some games in yeah in center field, and did okay. All this kind of stuff, blah blah blah. Okay, you move Carpenter back over to second okay. base, which is his natural position, which is where he played in college, which is okay. He's made some bonehead plays at second base that are driving me absolutely crazy. He had he was trying to turn a double play the other day and tried to back in a ball that was right at him. Besides fielding it like you should. And tossing the second base, which was an error, which drove me crazy. Diaz, Diaz has been the most solid shortstop, the most solid fielder and hitter we've had, I would say, all season. I wouldn't say he's the most solid fielder um, because at the beginning of the season he was terrible and that was impossible to watch. But this last month, completely agree. Yeah, I, so he's probably your most solid player so far. Then you have Johnny Peralta, who – has only played shortstop basically, and he played a little outfield for the Tigers, but has only played shortstop for the Tigers. Now is playing third. Mm-hmm. When your second baseman you have now has played third for you the past two seasons, so there's mixed matches even there. Holiday has been hitting the ball good as of late, but he's not always starting in left you field. You have Wong playing left field. You have Holiday playing left field. Fam in center. Wong in center. Grichik maybe in center if or when he ever comes back. Um, yeah, and then Scotty hasn't always been out in the outfield. So you've had Moss in right field. Moss, I mean, and Scotty, and Adams. Yeah, I mean it's unbelievable. They have to come up with a lineup. I don't care where they bat in the lineup, but you have to yeah. come up with a position that's going to where you when they show up to the ballpark every single day. They know that they're starting at those positions, so that they know the case for Wong. Wong right now in my eyes, even though he is my favorite player on the Cardinals, doesn't deserve to start. At all, in my eyes, doesn't shouldn't Probably start. Probably not right now. Yeah, I put Fam in center, Holiday left, Carpenter second, Diaz yeah. short, Peralta third. Yeah, it, it. 
I mean, you have a team like the Brewers right now who are really bad, but consistently put out the same the positions. put out the consistent every game. Yeah. And, every and single I'm game, not, they know where they're playing. Can you name me a, 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 a playoff team in the last, I don't know, four or five seasons that has had this amount of turnover? Um, the only one that I can I think can't. of that comes close is the Dodgers, and that's because they have, like, Kike Hernandez uh, is an outfielder for him, but can play. Yeah, but can play um, infield. Uh, you have um, who was it? Chase Tutley, Howie Kendrick. You had them who could mm-hmm. play second base. Howie now can play some third. Um, uh, what was it? Um, third, third base. Justin Turner's playing there, but he's also playing some first. I mean, it's unbelievable. Like. And, and that's and that's and, about it for the, them. I mean, that's the reason they're not winning the West, in my opinion. Now, I think the the Giants are very good. Uh, I think they had the most talent, um, but I think one of the reasons the Dodgers aren't really in contention, while well, one, their pitching is terrible, two, um, is the turnover as well. I just don't see playoff teams having this amount of turnover and and this amount of uncertainty as to who's playing where, who's batting where, uh, day in and day out. Yeah. It's and it's what's really bad is I don't think that they're in a position where they can trade for those places either no, unless you're trading away that those the people playing at those positions. But the only one that's worth giving up right now is players at first base. Yeah. Like that's the only that's the only position you can take away, but that's not our only problem. Yeah. And and that, and that wouldn't solve it at all. You know, I I see this as a first base and right field. They're, you know, with Moss Adams and Scotty. Um, first base and right field, you have that whole mix up. You have um, left field, center field, and second base, and, and and that's all grouped together as well. Because Wong can apparently play everywhere now. I didn't know he played outfield in college, uh, but yeah. that was news to me when he came back. It's like, oh, I can play outfield now. You can? I didn't know that. Good yeah. for him, uh, but I I was not made aware of that. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, Carpenter. He played- I think Carpenter, he on second base his senior year in college. Carpenter's got to stay in the lineup. That's obvious. Um, so get him in wherever. But, gosh, it's just sort of starting to frustrate me when I look at my phone or look at the internet or look at the TV every night and say, hmm, where's Wong playing now? Where's Carpenter playing now? It's it's uh, it's like Jeopardy, you know. I'll, I'll, I'll take left field for 200, Alex. I mean, who's who's playing there tonight? Yeah, I – you have two main. You have basically two mainstays. Oh, just letting you know, everybody. Yadier Molina just hit his fifteen hundred hit of his career. Um, they're actually saving the ball for him. He just got a hit. Um, but that, I mean, speaking of him, that's you're basically your two mainstays in your lineup right now are Diaz at shortstop and Yadier at catcher. Yeah, everywhere. Out of your nine there. positions, you have two. Yeah. That you know who's basically going to start at both of them. Like right now, Greg Garcia is starting and, at third base. One of the fascinating things to me about all this is that this isn't a result of injury. Usually, when you see players get injured, they have to mix and match because what else are you going to do? And that makes sense. That's fine. But the thing about the Cardinals this season is that for the most part, they've been healthy. Um, they haven't had any major injuries. the The pitching they've used the same five starters all season. Uh, for the most part, they've been healthy, um, yeah. and yet they're still, you know, playing this this giant puzzle. Yeah, um, I, I I completely agree with what you're saying. I like I said, if you're a true fan of the Cardinals right now, you should be so confused as to what what's going on that is driving you absolutely crazy. Like I can't tell you. I completely agree with you. It drives me bonkers when I see, you know, Colton Wong's playing second base today. He might play center field tomorrow. Matt yeah, where he could start at a second thing, base and then move from center to left. Exactly. One thing that was supposed to happen was Holiday was supposed to play first base. He might have played two games at first base. Yeah. We can, I think, officially declare that experiment over. I don't know if it's over, but when Gritchick comes back, if Gritchick isn't <clears> hitting like Gritchick should be, that experiment is over because I yeah. think that their plan was to have Gritchick play outfield, Van play outfield, Piscotty play outfield, and Holiday was supposed to play first. But that's before 
you know, that is, that's way Adam before started hitting Adam Moss started, started hitting. hitting. Yeah, and Moss started hitting like Moss should. And that's another thing is you have the player you traded for last year who was supposed to be there wasn't there, but he's there this year. Mm-hmm. Adams is finally starting to somewhat come around. Holiday's having an average holiday season. He's on track to do his normal thing. Um, all the the only one that hasn't performed yet, like you think he, sh- the only two have been Grichik and Wong out of position players that's not performing like you think that they should be. Mm-hmm. But yet, only two of the nine positions you don't know who's starting where on a day. That's a basis. that's a very good point. Yeah, you know, two of the nine. You know, that's that's pretty bad. Uh, when you look at, you know, at all the division leaders and maybe even the two wild cards, Giants, Nationals, Cubs, and the Cubs are injured, so they do have a little bit of turnover right now. But when healthy, they don't. Um, and then who's winning the wild cards? The Mets and the Marlins right now. They don't. They don't have the same problems we do. Now, yes, they are a different team. They have their own problems, but um, you never, almost never, see playoff contending teams. Uh, Mix and match this much and be successful at it. The only the only top team right now that I can think of that has any any question about who's playing where is the Nationals right now in center field play two different center fielders right now. And that's one position. Yeah, that's one of the nine. And that's that's not saying one of the nine is the only one decided. That's saying that one of the nine is in. That's the only one you don't know about. Dan- yep. Murphy knows he's playing second base. I don't mm-hmm. know who plays first base. Espinosa now. knows where he's playing. Yeah, you know, he's Worth playing knows short. where he's playing. Uh, Harper knows where he's playing. Yeah. Who who plays? Oh, Rendon plays third base for him. Zimmerman plays first. Catcher's going to be Ramos. Like, you know that going into it. Like, it's driving me crazy. Ugh. By the way, Wong just hit a triple, and it's two to nothing Cardinals for right Good. now. So. Just an update if anybody's listening, which I doubt anybody is. But I mean, it's I. I that's what's been the heart. Like we haven't, you know, me and you haven't. This is the first time in probably about two weeks that me and you both have sat down, shot a video, and it's still just as confusing two weeks ago as it exactly. Is. You're exactly right. Like nothing has changed. Nobody's made any changes. I don't know. I don't know what they have to do to change it. I don't know if Mozeliak is going to have to say something. I, I don't think know. he's going to have to make a trade, probably for a bullpen piece. I I've, I've heard Sonny Gray's name tossed around, and, and we'll get into this uh, in July more when the trade deadline comes around. But I've heard Sonny Gray's name thrown around, Chris Sale's name thrown around, Andrew Miller, Chapman. Those that's very that's been widely publicized. But um, I mean, yeah, the only the teams you'll see here lately that will be trading for certain pieces like the indians will probably be trading if they trade for anything will be think, for a certain piece i think the um, cubs will be cert- will, will be searching for a bullpen piece they'll be searching probably for a closer if i had to assume a, a closer um who else i mean pirates probably won't be trading for anyone um but i mean other than that one quick note on the Pirates, and I'm going to make this really quick. I'm surprised at how bad they've been this season. Now, that they've had some injuries, um, but you know, no one picked them to win the division. It was all Cardinals or Cubs. Um, but I, I I never thought we'd see them under 500 on July 2nd. But we can they're, get into that yeah, they're, later as well. I think that they're falling back into the team that you should be. You're not going to be able to sustain success with Jordy Mercer as your shortstop. <laughs> With Josh Harrison, who was a couple years ago, was an every position kind of player, who now is your starting second baseman. Mm-hmm. John Jaso, as a first baseman, is your leadoff hitter. You signed him for on base percentage. Are you yep. freaking kidding me? Yep. That signing drove me fucking insane. <laughs> How you're supposed to be a playoff contending team, but you're going to sign a first baseman for on base percentage. Are you serious? Do I, do I need to bleep that out? Oh my God. That. Oh my lord! That drive first base is a power position. That's why Brandon Moss plays first base. He bats two fifty, but hits thirty five home runs. <laughs> John Jaso is not your first base. He's a converted first baseman from a ki- from a catcher. Yep. Now I can understand catching on base percentage. That's understandable. But first base is not on base percentage kind of material. That is power. 
slugging percentage, OPS, those kind of things. Not just on base percentage. Oh, and he's crap. Your, lead, your first baseman is your leadoff hitter. <laughs> Does that make any sense? No. No wonder, they, no, no, no wonder they're under 500. It makes no <laughs> sense. I don't, think, I don't think I've ever seen you this this uh, riled up before. If that – if real quick, real quick. I know we may not have hardly any fans, but if you think signing a first baseman for on-base percentage and batting leadoff for your lineup is okay – don't even subscribe to our channel. Just go away because I have no sympathy for you because you know nothing about this game of baseball. Not, not a single clue do you understand about what is going on on a daily basis when it comes to just baseball in general. Because if you can name me one more first baseman that is playing right now for on-base percentage and not power, I might – you know what? I'll take you out to lunch. Think about it because it's not even possible – I think I might have one. Hold on. Let me see here. No, no. That was specifically signed for on-base percentage. That's what John Jason was signed for, was his on-base percentage and a leadoff batter. Find me another lineup that the leadoff batter is a first baseman for on-base percentage. No. I was going to say, I mean, he's not batting leadoff, uh, but his OBP is 402, and it's uh, Anthony Rizzo. Anthony Rizzo's made to hit dingers. Yeah, I know. I know. You're not helping, Paul. You're not Maybe helping. Joey Votto? No, Joey Votto was signed to hit dingers, too. He's an idiot. Joey Votto is but he's also, But he's also a very good OBP guy. He is very but, good whatever. OBP. He is very good, but he's not batting leadoff for your Cincinnati. No, and there's a reason he's not batting leadoff. Yeah, because he needs to hit home runs. Yeah, he's, he's, like That's the problem that the fans of Cincinnati and the Cincinnati organization has had with Joey Votto. He's taking hitting from a team perspective to an individual perspective to try to get on base more besides of driving in runs. Like it's not, There's certain positions on the field that are made for on-base percentage, and then there's certain ones for home runs and dingers. And first base is home runs and dingers, not on-base percentage batting leadoff in your lineup. You're not making the playoffs like that, Pirates. Give it up. Well, yeah, and they'll learn the hard way. They'll learn the hard oh, way. God. Make change already. Make it. <laughs> Trade. But you should have you should have signed Pedro Alvarez back. I'm sorry, this video went a little bit longer because of this minor rant that I'm going on. <laughs> but that, I mean, oh my God. You, I, can, I can already tell. Well, at the end of the season, they don't make the playoffs. So, well, we, I mean, we thought we had a good team put together. We thought we had a good <laughs> chance of making the playoffs. I mean, it just didn't go our way. No, what you should say is our management is stupid signing a first baseman, nothing against John Jaso, but they're stupid for signing a first baseman for on base percentage about leadoff in our lineup. When you have people like Starling Marte, Gregory Peranco, and Andrew McCutcheon, you're not going to win anything with Jordy Mercer as your shortstop because he's not going to produce enough. I, I don't understand how you think you're going to make the playoffs like that. And But to their point, they're throwing out the same lineup and same positions every day. Yeah, at least give him credit on that. Like every single day, you know that John Jason was batting leadoff for you, and he's playing first base. Like you know that's happening. I rant over yeah, until can, next yeah. podcast because oh, I can go all day. I could go all day. But this is the podcast. I don't even know what day it is right now. I'm just, July second. So, go ahead. July second. July second. The podcast for July second. The eleventh inning stretch. If you're a fan of first baseman's batting leadoff, just leave. My name's Alex Schneider, along with my good friend and co-host, Paul Epi. I don't know what he believes in about the first base position, but if he believes first baseman should lead off, he should leave too. I don't, but I'm not as adamant <laughs> about it as as, uh, as you are. But other than that, that's been the podcast for this week. Sorry, it's been kind of a break. Uh, Paul decided to take a vacation because you know he's a kind of a loser. And I decided that I needed to work Monday through Friday every day. And so uh, hopefully we get back on a normal schedule. You guys can expect more content here on a daily basis. Uh, trying to make schedules kind of combine. It's really hard. Um, but other than that, this is the 11th thing stretch. My name is Alex Schneider. That is. And this is, and this is Paul Epi. That, that was a fun podcast. Uh, thank you guys for tuning in. Uh, hope to see you guys next week. Uh, and have a safe July 4th weekend. Mm -hmm. Stay safe out there, folks. See ya.